Welcome to episode 472 of This Week in League. I'm Nate. And I'm Glenn. And there's no Jay. There is no Jay. Fucking stepdad and Reynolds <clears throat> has pulled out of what... Oh, he's missed, the, he's missed the members one, hasn't he? Or two this year. Yeah, he has and, missed uh, a couple and, of members. And, 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 this, and this is his first main, this is his first main, uh, main episode he's missed. Or is it? No, nah, it is the first main one he's missed yet. It's fucking shocking. Shocking behaviour, though. Twirl, we'll call him. We'll just call him Twirl. Under a very, very thin veneer, it's just a fucking flake. You just, you, you want to, I mean, yeah, you just, you, like, I've never missed an episode ever, obviously. Um, you haven't missed that many. But when you have missed them, I mean, it's been like major fucking life catastrophe events. Yeah. Like, and the other one was when you were in, in Dakota. <coughs> and you probably still would have done it then, except, mm. you know, there's no internet in the jungles of fucking PNG. That is fair. Like, <laughs> that is fair. But. Yeah, Nicklin, so, heart attack, losing baby. Exactly, was, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I was, I wasn't going to go into details, but yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Where you at, Jay, motherfucker? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> I, I, I mean, yeah, I think you had a little bit of a sore throat. <laughs> Maybe if you talk less shit, you'd get less of an infection in your throat. Just saying. Yeah, exactly. If there's, if it's a, uh, yeah, you know, there's, there's a phrase there like we you know warts and all, and um. And that phrase doesn't appear into when you should uh, go down on someone. <laughs> 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 so uh, yeah, look, extremely disappointing for um, uh, you know, I'm sure for the, for the listeners who uh, who support or Penrith. Not. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, the Penrith supporting listeners, I'm sure, yeah. it's super disappointing. Chris Bailey, but, Chris you know, Bailey will cry into his fucking yeah. porridge, but about that, that's about it. But for the fans of the other 15 clubs, I mean, I guess I guess you're going to find this, this episode particularly fair and balanced. <laughs> and free of agendas. Yeah, free, zero, zero agendas. I mean, because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm agenda-free for like a month now. I mean, Trent's gone. I've got nothing to... Uh, all my enemies are vanquished. So I've got nothing, to, I got nothing that, uh, that, that I need to, to do anymore. But, um, yeah, now we're looking, we're looking at the news articles and... There's not a lot. Go- there's not a lot going on that isn't just, uh, yeah, coaching agenda. and merry-go-round yeah. speculation. Yeah. I wanted. Bullshit. I wanted to talk a little bit about you know the Leilua thing. Luciano Leilua getting the immediate release from the West Tigers. Thing is, they've gone and released him, and it's not actually a done deal that he can then, you know, start his stint at the Cowboys early because it's said that they they don't potentially have the the salary cap space to to get him up there for the, for the last half of the year. So. He's left in some kind of limbo, limbo land, I guess, and because uh, he's definitely been released from his contract from the West Tigers, um, and I don't. And honestly, after the last, after the weekend, I you know, do they want him there anyway? Like, I, I think that's like, why they gave him the release, mate. I mean, that was like he did. He, he was responsible for all four of those two man strips, right? It felt like it was him every time. No, I want to say at least three, but it could have yeah, been four. Yeah, I don't I mean, that's like, that, that's, a, that's an unwanted record that he set. I'm sure. I mean, just absolutely fucking r- ridiculous garbage plays. Um, look, you know, it's good for the Cowboys that they can't fit him in this year because honestly, like they they've spoken, you know, about well, you know, look, he can sort of cover us in these yeah you know, situations where we've got the injury to you know um, Hill and Lukey and um, and Gilbert. But man, honestly. Just, just pull someone out of the cupboard up there because I just don't know. I don't know if he's the answer to any question. Not unless, the Cowboys. <clears throat> unless the question is, who is the bigger, fatter brother of the most disappointing fucking yeah. pair of, of brothers that ever fucking line up for the West Tigers? You know? Um, yeah. Look, I, um, I, don't, I don't... I've, I've rated his performances... Um, for the most part of the season, um, he has a, he, he has a, he has like a damaging sort of run to him here and there. If he fucking holds it, if he successfully plays it afterward, yeah. the games this year and towards the back end of last year, he played a bit of a lone hand. Like he, he he was building a consistency that we hadn't really seen in his career to date. I just it's a strange one for the Cowboys to sign him initially. Anyway, for me, I, it's kind of like they signed him, I think, before these guys had emerged, and then all yeah, of a sudden they just amen. went like bam and you know, turned yeah, the origin I, players I overnight. You know, there was still some maybe some uh speculation over whether 
Luki and, and Nanai and Cotter and, you know, these guys were going to be exactly. what they are. So they're like, oh, well, you know, he's an established guy. He's obviously doing well. well. We'll bring him into the system. It's even stranger, given how the Cowboys are going, to bring him in now, if, if yeah. they do. I just feel like that. And and if it's to cover Lukey, that that's a strange one. I'd... Look, I and I under, look, I understand self destructive behaviour, right? Like, things are going so well. What can I do to fucking sabotage them? Like, <laughs> that's what the Cowboys are doing. We're going so much better than we thought we would. Yeah, yeah we was you know, we were going to be the spooners on on paper at the start of yeah, the season. Exactly we're up for the spoon, right. and now look at us. We you know top we four. Need to you put know, some extra resistance guaranteed. on this shit. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, what can we do to fuck that up? I know. <laughs> let's get a fucking penalty dropathon machine, bring him into the side, and fuck up our completions and our defense. <laughs> That'll test us. Yep, yep. yep. And, and with, with his carries, though, like I, I feel like there's this—I don't know what to call it—like yeah, crazy hair syndrome or something. Mm. Like people who have long hair, that is wild hair. When they hit the line and their head snaps back and their hair flies, and it just feel—it just gives the illusion that they're doing something. That more. they're traveling so they're, yeah, they're, with they're, a lot more velocity. They're than traveling they're faster. Traveling. They're hitting harder in the contact. <laughs> you know, shit like that. And I feel like he's, you know, almost the poster child for that. I, I just, I'm just going to put it out there. Yeah. Not something I can personally relate to. Well, no, 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 that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah. You know, well, you, yeah, you would, you'd be the, the least effective looking runner in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Not oh, a compliment. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Ben Kennedy was all right. Though. I mean, yeah, I, that's true. I, I, I that's love true. that guy. Well, he left a trail of destruction. That's the thing. I don't know that I've yeah. got that in me. Yeah, yeah. Fair <clears throat> Although um, I did have my first first training run uh, at uh, with the Touch Football Club tonight. <clears throat> what do you mean your yeah. first training run with club? You're, you're playing. I'm, my, that is my goal. That's my wow. Plan. You dusted um, off the fucking boots. I literally, I had a pair of boots that I bought when I was coaching uh, Jackson, and um, I, I literally, shit you not, I dusted them off. I, I literally <laughs> got a wipe and I wiped the fucking <laughs> dust off them. <laughs> Have you got so is it so is it straight up touch? It's not like Oz tag or any modifier. No, no, anything, just like straight up touch. Without tackling yeah, straight. Uh, so Jackson, Have you, Jackson got the, Have you got the motor for touch? <laughs> No, well, that's what I need to build. That's why I'm training. <laughs> um, it was uh, it was interesting. I, I feel like, given it's the first fucking run I've had in in a fair while, I feel like I did okay. Uh, my Aaron son Woods plays first grade, mate. You got nothing to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, that's fair. That's fair. But um, the thing is, the lo- the long term goal is that. Um, well, Jackson's obviously playing B grade men's at the moment at fourteen yep. years of age. So, yep. um, ultimately, I, I'd love for him to, you know, for me to probably play up and him to play down, and, and we meet in the middle at, in maybe C grade. Yeah. And, um, and well, when he real, well, when he when he when he decides that he doesn't want to make A grade or have any further aspirations in the game of touch, and he's <laughs> just happy to fucking play social. <laughs> well, he, he the thing is, he was supposed to. He's he's. Forming a habit of playing two games, so he'll he'll fill in for C grade, who always struggles oh, for numbers, right. and then he'll play his B grade game. Yeah, um, I don't know how many times he can do that in a season without having to not go down. If you know is he mean. playing? Is he playing the shit quality game first or the good quality game first? Well, C grade comes first, and oh, then really? B, so that's, B grade straight after. Yeah, so. you, you, you. I mean, that's that's <laughs> got to be. That's got to be detrimental, right? I mean, yeah. you know, well, it's, it's just a warm-up. I, I think he used it as a warm-up. warm-up and playing whole fucking yeah. games. But. Yeah. To the point where, let's what I say, he busted his knee. He was supposed to play um, B grade. C grade was struggling for numbers, so he came down early and filled in. And he twinged his knee at basketball the night before. Mm-hmm. And then he gets out there. And we're getting very off track as far as uh, a rugby league podcast, but we, it is what we do. Um Runs out there, hurts his knee, hobbles around, still busts a gut, still fucking, you know, two length, essentially length of the field fucking chase downs when everyone else in the actual team... Had given it a bump. Had, was like, fuck that, I'm not chasing. And he's fucking <laughs> filling in chasing. Legitimately hobbled off the field and went and told his, his B-grade coach, it was like, mate, I, I'm no good. <laughs> so. Oh, look, you know he gets you know, he gets he gets some kind of like imaginary medal for for being a team player and, and toughness and the rest. Yeah, of Yeah, look, he's, he's just a competitive for little yeah. shit. He's, he's more to the point, you know. He's, he's very competitive. Um, but look, it, it was fun to be out there training 
you know, yep. tonight with them. And um, it's a fucking small step on a fair, fair journey I've got in front of me, if I'm honest, but I, I did okay. Yeah, yeah. If I was going to jump back into that, I'd want to do something like, you know, like, like I was telling you, something that's got like a bit more footy to be played in it rather yeah, than like yeah. just a, rather than just roll 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 you know like that's like Volandi's rules yeah <laughs> I, mean, I want some yeah I need to wrestle I might <laughs> see uh, I might see where it, what it opens up to but at the moment um I'm one session in and I haven't died yeah although I am going to feel it tomorrow in my legs you look so, alright you look you, you look alright you don't look you know, like half dead or anything to me I, I think the benefit really and we're going to get super new age here but I've um I do yoga once a week, and that's right. on a Tuesday. That's on a Tuesday night. Um, and bit of downward dog action. Oh man! And no, I am the the yoga <laughs> class that I go. Is, it's it's um it's called Brick Man. So it's specifically for blokes, obviously, that are um, looking to get into the yoga. Brick Man. It was like you did, instead of using a lot of yoga mat, you fucking do it on like a just a rug where there's just Lego <laughs> strewn all across uh, it. <laughs> well, it's, it's a play on words from Bik, Bikram, but um, yeah, yeah. it's also, you know, obviously many blokes have the, the flexibility of a fucking house brick net, and I'm, I'm no exception to that. So um, shout out to the bloke last night that legitimately fell asleep at the end of the yoga class when I thought that some muscle or tendon from, it's probably my hamstring, but it felt like it was attached somewhere deep in my ass. Yeah. Um, it felt like it was going to fucking tear off wherever it was. So I was like, "Can't I ain't falling asleep in this. This is fucking, this is a battle. I'm fighting this a battle here. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, mate. Fucking completely. Yeah. And yeah. that was because he was just so relaxed. I guess so. I mean, I've never, I've never slept better. He's a big better. fella. Like, he's yeah. a big fella. I think he's probably, he's a bit of a cupid doll because at yeah. one point that, you know, we did a, a reverse curvature fucking thing where we, you know, you lay with a block under your fucking shoulder blades and as soon as his head hit the floor, he was fucking, within 15 seconds, it was legitimately, not quite snoring, but he was he was 100% yeah. out. He's just like <laughs> narcoleptic. He's just narco- out. He's, not, he's narcoleptic like me. Shout out to that bloke. Like, I, fuck, I, could, I, could lay, I could lay my head down anywhere. I, mean, I think it came yeah. from when I was living in Japan and you get on the train and people there would just go to sleep on the train because there's no, culturally, nothing's going to happen to you. On, you know, you're not yeah. going to get robbed. And like, and you you just learn this sixth sense of like you go to sleep on the train, and it might be a half an hour journey or something, and then and you wake up just as it's fucking, just, just as it's uh slowing down, about to stop uh, at your station, you know. And so I'd, now like, I'd get now some I'm Japanese conductor, like some Japanese conductor at the fucking depot when the train's done seven rounds of fucking the entire country, <laughs> <laughs> telling me I've got to get off the fucking train. <laughs> yeah, yes, but, but um. Yeah, nice one. Um, so you know, well, I guess you know, segueing, segueing from your, you know, your plans. Uh, the NRLW has confirmed some expansion teams for twenty twenty three, and uh, they confirmed that they're going to add the Raiders, the Sharks, the Cowboys, I guess Cowgirls, and the West Tigers uh, admitted to the Premiership. That'll bring the the number of teams up to ten. So this is the biggest single season increase in squad size and everything i kind of like the way they really were inching it up you know like two at a time but um you know i guess they feel like certainly the interest is uh blown up over you know after the last season uh hopefully the players are there as well to fill um and now that they've got a 10 team competition and they've admitted the west tigers then ninth is on the table possibly go wrong (laughs) ninth is on the table in yet another competition it's amazing um and it's probably what I'm looking forward to the most. I'll be honest. <laughs> to see if the girls, see win if the girls it. can pull it off. <laughs> they will probably win it. Um, I think it's great. I am um, a big fan of the NRLW. I think it's a great, um, a great competition, and the way that they've, as you said, eased into it, mm. um, and it probably speaks to the fact that they're trying to make it sustainable, which is, um, which is great foresight yep um and you know I, I look forward to the to the day when you know every nrl team has an nrlw team and you know potentially they play in the you know i know they mix the schedules up and stuff but i'd like to see them play on the same day and and make a real 
Yeah, and when they you know the old, them. you know how um, back in three the day, grades. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's not to diminish the NRLW. I'm just saying, like, make a real day of going to the footy. Like, oh, particularly if they, they yeah, particularly if they, if, if they, they're televising those NRLW games before the, the yeah. NRL games as well. I mean, because that audience, they're gonna that that you know people are going to start what they're doing earlier. Mm. And you know, catch them, and even if they catch the end of it, you know, they catch the second half or whatever. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna increase the interest, I think, in the games, and mm. um, because like, and the quality is actually getting pretty good. Like my my hypercritical knock on it in the in the the first season was that, and this is not this this is not to be like insulting, but it was kind of like the the, the bulldogs kind of play, whereas defensively, you know, they were pretty good, and you had and you, you had some of the women that would actually you know put some hits on and everything like that and look pretty solid there. But when it came to attack, it was very, it was very <laughs> one out. Um, the kicking games weren't great and the opportunities that they'd create for themselves, they just didn't have the ability to pass selectively and accurately enough to, to execute them. Mm. But then you fast forward to like the last season and there were some fucking cracking games. Yeah. And the, the the standard of play, like it felt like it almost doubled year on year. Yeah, it's coming. And, it's come a long way in a short space of time. Yeah, sure. and if so, if it keeps. So if, if they can if they can significantly increase the standard of play again next, year, I mean, like I don't think they I don't think they can because it got it got so good at times last year that I think, you know, they they're getting they're they're thereabouts now mm. where they where they probably need to be. So hopefully they can they maintain that with uh, four new clubs coming in. It's the biggest expansion, so you know it is. There is a little bit of danger there, but um, well, look, yeah, I, I guess there probably is the danger of chopping up the field, which may, uh, you know, if you play several games, there's always a cur- I mean, there's always a curtain raiser though these days, you know. Yeah. So at least one game. So I, I, you know, I'd love to see it go all the way through. You know, like have a New South Wales slash Queensland Cup game. Yeah, it's it's kind yeah. of it's very it's very niche though. We we are not in the we are not in the majority for that sort of thing. Mm. Believe it or not, like that's what we. That, I, I mean, I can I can say for certainty without even asking you a question. I mean, that's what that's what you did when you were a kid. Hundred percent. And that's what and that's that'd what be I would the do. tennis club at, at Lemire, putting away schooners. Yeah. Um, in preparation for a long drive home, uh, as you did in the day, as, <laughs> as was the custom at the time. Um, and. I'd toddle on over to in the to HQ camp. and then fucking bench seat. No, it was like a, valiant. Fuck, it was an XB, was like... <laughs> XB station wagon. Yeah, <laughs> did, did have a valiant at one stage. Um, but yeah, I I would toddle on over to Arana Park or Campbelltown Stadium and um, watch the the twenty threes in the in the reserve grade and wonder why Noel Goldthorpe wasn't getting a run in in front of Jason Taylor in. First grade, but you know, never fucking happened. Yeah. yeah, went on to play for the fucking Mariners and the Cowboys and fucking killed it. Jason Taylor left and fucked off and made a career at the Bears. So yeah. only two, and being and being, and being a grumpy fucking traffic warden. True. Yeah, very true. <laughs> Which is like the greatest and destroying match, Robbie Ferris. The great, the greatest match of person personality and profession. <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, good work on the expansion. Good luck on the coming season with 10 sides. And that's good as well because now they've got 10 teams. They can get the season. They can you know add more weeks to the schedule. Um, yeah. So hopefully onwards and upwards and it continues the way it's been going. Uh, there's no other real... We want to, I, I want to talk about the, the Tongan team and... Um, and the, not all the teams have been named yet for the for the Pacific Islands. Stuff. Like uh, PNG are yet to name a team, I believe. I've seen, I've seen Fiji and Tonga. Um, but we'll talk about them when the dust settles next week on next week's episodes because, you know, particularly with Tonga, they've, they've selected in their squad, they've selected Daniel Tupo and Katoni Staggs. And the clarification on that came out today that that was always something that their coach, Christian Wolf was going to do. And he told Fittler he was going to select them because he wanted to make sure they were selected for Tonga. And then it's up to Fittler to select them for origin. And if he selects them for origin, then fine, they'll play in origin. Yeah. But if not, they're not, they're not being caught out and not having the opportunity to play the other game. That's the, the, the where the teams are announced that, you know, a couple of days earlier than the, uh, the new South Wales team. So that's a great way to do it. And I guess it clears up the potential, I think, you know, I suppose Tupo and Stags will be there then for game two of Origin, but we'll find out 
on a couple of days. So, yeah. yeah um, right. <clears throat> so the games coming up this weekend, we're starting with Thursday night football, and it is the St. George Illawarra Dragons taking on the South Sydney Rabbitohs in Wollongong. Dragon side. Rawalawa returns on the wing. Uh, Ruben drops out of the squad. Uh, Fenai back on the other wing, which pushes uh, Monga out of the 17. Murderous Frank Molo is benched, with DeBellin moving to prop. And uh, Jaden Sewer starting in the back row. Umbai is benched, and McCullough. Maka is starting lock. What is, not, what, no, not, he's not, no, he's not, 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 on, not yeah. on my list. No, I have, yeah, I've got to so, say, yeah, that's a mistake there. On what I was reading, yeah, because you can see there, um, they've got now I can see Tarek Sims is there, yeah, and Macker is the yeah, because I mean, why the fuck would you put Macker in the side anywhere other than that? Um, well, why would you put him in, even at hooker? But anyway, he's there and it's a milestone game for him, yeah. Well, and you know, maybe that's part of, that's part of the reason. I mean, yeah, Macker's lost a step, we, we know, we know, but um, he, did you say he's lost a step? He's lost, yeah, like he's, like, he's lost a leg. I like this. <laughs> I like, like this very liberal, conservative, and, and yeah, passionate this, version yeah, of, dairy, of you. Dairy, right. Like, you know, someone's got to bring the Dairy Queen vibe. Um, I mean, Aaron Wood's still playing first grade, so Macca, well, you know, he's he's not that. Fair. I mean, he's no, he's in not. he's in the same ballpark as that, but he's not that. Rabbit side yeah. though. Um, Taffy replaces Mama Zealous on the bench. That is it for changes. I think the Dragons would be better than they were last week, but I think the Rabbitohs are just starting to find a little bit of form and cohesion. I think Damian Cook will have a, a, a huge game. Um, I, I can't see the Rabbitohs losing this game. Yeah, I still, I still expect the Rabbitohs to have the, the 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 advantage through the forwards. Damian Cook will be tapering his way up to, to a, a state of origin, as he always does in uh, games around this time of year. You know, I'm not set, I'm not, you know, I'm not set, I'm still not convinced on the halves, but they've got some big game players like Alex Johnson, Campbell Graham, Cameron Murray, and I think just the experience and quality of those guys alone Mm. is enough, particularly when you put them up against, you know, pretty much Ben Hunt. Exactly. Who's playing almost, almost a lone hand. Like the dragons, and as I said, as I said uh, in the last episode, like the the dragons created like a, a lot of opportunities and breaks against the cowboys. I think they had at least three line breaks, like, and they and they were they weren't statistical line breaks or anything. They were they were clean, you know, like thirty meter runs that they just couldn't finish off. And I just don't, you know, I don't know, I don't know what, you know, whether the coaching or the quality of the players, yeah. Improves in one week to, to, to take advantage of them. No. Uh, yeah, Rabbits, easy. Um, Friday night, the 6 p.m. game, the Mighty Manly Seagulls take on the North Queensland Cowboys at Brookvale. And uh, the Manly side, welcome on, back. Did you, you just called it the 6 p.m. game. It is. So the 6 p.m. game. When Manly it's, play, almost a, it's not a pub Well, no, spot. I mean, the Cowboys are playing as well. I mean, it's a fucking, it's a cracker of a game. One of the games of the season. I mean, if you know, you, got, you think of like a doggy side in there. <laughs> it, earns, it earns its fucking title, but I mean, this is obviously a cracking game between you know two of the form sides in the competition. Oh now, my God. Uh, the Manly side, they uh, welcome back DCE at halfback. Uh, Schuster shifts to the bench, and um, Burbo drops to the reserves. The Cowboys side, Cotter returns at prop. Cohen has benched. Nanai is back um, in the second row. Tom Gilbert is out of the squad. Uh, Lemuelu starts in the back row. Lukey will miss the rest of the season. Um, and no word yet on the uh, status of Luciano Leilua. Although, believe me, I would love to welcome him into the side to have the, the opportunity to lose to Manly twice in six days. <laughs> but uh, It would be an interesting achievement. It would be, it would be. It would be, and um, and really, the, the, when you think about it, there aren't that many mid-season changes. No, and then you've got the subset of that subset of mid-season changes where a player potentially could be. Like I remember, um, it happened last year. I think um, Malmalo got smashed by the Storm playing for the Warriors, yep. and then the next game, you you were playing the Storm, I think. 
Yeah, and he was like, they put 60 on us in about three minutes. <laughs> yeah, and, and poor Kenny, what a, what a shit week that was. Yeah. <laughs> a low point in his lifetime, I'm fair not, to say. I'm not, I'm not sure he's ever recovered, actually, if I'm honest. <laughs> Look, I'm... A, I'm, I'm I wouldn't say I'm confident, but I mean, I, th- I think that I think that Manly can get the job done at Brookvale. To be honest, I mean, the way that they've played um, last couple of weeks has been solid. The, error, the, the pleasing things, the error is way down. The, the the piggyback penalties and and all that sort of bullshit out of the opposed uh, out of the opposition's end, that's been cut way down. And now the two of the two of the biggest killers that they, that they've had for like not this season, like you know, last couple of seasons, I suppose. Um, Seem it seems like you know the the defensive problems out wide are, are certainly improved if not fixed. Can't you beat the Tigers? And uh, for look, fuck's mate, sake, we beat the Tigers and a fuck and, and a fucking category five cyclone <clears throat> blowing behind you, which is basically like beating you know three Tigers teams, which is still not beating a first grade side. <laughs> Hey, you know, you know, you may not like it, but you must accept the Tigers are in first grade. They represent a club. <laughs> they have a club representing the, 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 their their fine history. It's a fucking long bow. It's a long bow you've drawn there. <laughs> but look, I think yeah, I think every, everything's trending up. Um, I mean, obviously the Cowboys, one of the form teams of the competition, deserve to be favourites for the game. But uh, I, I I look forward to seeing. <laughs> I look forward to the challenge. As much as I love to see you happy. Um, on those rare occasions it actually happens, um, I'll be tipping the Cowboys in this game. Yeah, I won't be I'm, tipping the I'm, Cowboys, but I, but I do concede they deserve to be favourites for this game. Yeah. But yeah, old-fashioned ambush at Brookie. Oh, the, the Brookvale factor is is a big one for Manly, um, and I feel like if it's a close game, the crowd, you know, they'll lift, and that'll give them a, an extra boost at the back end of the game. But... Uh, sadly, I don't think it's going to be a close game. I think the Cowboys will do it, do it reasonably comfortably. Yeah, and Chad, we've been talking about how much value for money he's been this year, but I mean, he's never had to fucking, he's never had to tackle the likes of Molly Olakwatu, and he's uh, never had, a, he's never come up against the fucking the the Jordan of the of the NRL in uh, Daily Cherry Evans. So yeah, no, he's in for no other team. No other team in the uh, in the NRL has a sizable Polynesian forward that would run at the halves you're right Manly is the only team that has that I'm glad see isn't it it's much easier to get along on the episodes I don't know what the thing why it is tonight but I I agree with you Glennie that's an excellent that's an astute observation you're welcome and I agree and I agree with you 100% (laughs) Melbourne Storm we're getting getting along fine what is it I can't quite put my finger on (laughs) yeah I I, I honestly don't I don't know what's different between tonight and last night um (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the Melbourne Storm take on the Brisbane Broncos in the late game on Friday. The uh, Storm side have named Pappy as a reserve, but I don't believe he's going to make his comeback. I th- which I, th- I think he's. I, I believe that he won't play in this game, and then he won't be available for Origin two. Um, Grant Anderson though remains in the side. Um, oh, and actually, there we go. There's an up. I didn't read the Wednesday update. Poor old Pappy's got COVID, so he's fucking gone. Um, the Broncos. <coughs> Adam Reynolds is out with a rib injury. Fourth, I actually looked it up. I think it was his fourth one this year. And uh, fourth people, injury. people will tell you that he's not. It, the people will tell you that he's not injury prone. And this no. is the thing: it's not like he's re- these, all these recurring injuries and stuff. I mean, I'll tell you, he's got an assortment of things. He's got soreness.es He's got <laughs> he's got all this shit that keeps him out of game. The mere suggestion that Adam Reynolds isn't injury prone yep. is doesn't pass the sniff test. No, and the and <clears throat> and the thing is that the rabbits knew like this is the Adam Reynolds experience and the rabbits knew and the thing is a team that's coming to the end of a premiership window like the rabbits and losing a coach and having to bring some new guys in they understand that the Adam Reynolds experience wasn't for them. What does he bring to the Broncos? A fuckload of professionalism and a great kicking game when he gets on the field. However, does he bring it for three the full 3 years they signed him to? I don't know. Um, Herbie Farnworth is out with the bicep injury. Well, the answer is already no, because yeah. he's had but four you've got injuries to, but, this year. But also, you do have to concede, though, apart from, you know, despite those injuries, he's brought a lot to the side. 
hundred percent. I fucking unless, rate. Unless, I rate the guy, and I, I would have signed him on a three year deal. Unless you want to crown, that, unless you want to crown that Kurt Capewell is the real driving force behind. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he um, he shouldn't be understated, but the, the biggest. Sorry, have you finished going through the ins and outs? Um, no, I haven't actually. Um, so, who else have we got here? Uh, Tyrone Roberts is going to pair with Mam in the halves. Staggs returns uh, to the centres and replaces Farnworth. Cobbo's back, so Pereira drops to the reserves. And Capewell returns, so that puts uh, Rabadi out of the 17. And uh, Turpin on the bench with Corey Pace out injured. What happened to Tyson Gamble? What, ha- what did happen to Tyson Gamble? That's an excellent question, and I don't did have an answer. Why, why, uh, why are you fucking dusting off the corpse of Tyrone Roberts and jamming him into the seven? When yeah, well, well, not two weeks ago, Ezra Mann played seven and Tyson Gamble played six, and they, they fucking made a reasonable fist of it. I thought. Yeah, I don't know what the what the what is the fucking story for him? I don't know. Um... Did he die? Surely that's the only possible explanation. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to see if there's any news or anything. Okay, because yeah, he's he's not. I have to get into an injury list later to see what the deal is with him, but. Uh... I mean, when they bring in start when they start bringing guys like uh, Turpin into the bench, mm. and he's you know maybe he died very out, very first, out of favour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, um, this this right. would be a tough one to. I think this would be a lot tougher to pick if Reynolds was playing. The fact that he's out, I think the Storm would just got too much, and the Broncos. Um, Lack that bit of direction and, and lose their way a little bit. But also, and also, the Storm are so good at at um, applying game plans and targeted pressure on young players and combinations that aren't there. Mm. And like Mam's been great since he's since he's been brought into first grade mm. due to the injury prone nature of Adam Reynolds. But <laughs> it's a different story when he's paired with Tyrone Roberts, who I don't think has played in like twelve years, mm. and they don't have a combination. <laughs> And the Storm, how, you know, they've got their set combination right there. Who Look, I guess the Broncos are going to have to make do after the unfortunate death of Tyson Campbell. Yeah, and maybe they could maybe they could lift and do it for Tyson. Maybe. Yeah. They'll be wearing black <laughs> armbands, surely. Uh, look, this, yeah, I think the Storm will be far too strong. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that... I mean, because this is, this is one of those games where you'd say, yeah, if, if uh, Reynolds was there, yeah, this is one of those real tests... Yeah, for uh, for the for the Broncos to prove the you know the reality of their credentials. I think the Broncos will be competitive and they'll they'll give a good account of themselves, um, but the Storm are just too good and and too adept at winning the big moments in the games. And yeah, I don't think the Broncos without Reynolds will have that ability to to wrestle that away from them. Tyson Gamble is suffering a leg injury, and the prognosis uh, for his return is indefinite. Yeah, there you go. Indefinite. So he's essentially, yeah, until we've heard other better news, he's died of a leg injury. Yeah, a, br- a brutal, a brutal leg injury. Um, I think Storm. I got think that he one. lost his leg, bled to death. Right, right, right. Well, that explains it. Um, the Sharks take on the Titans in Coffs Harbour. Um, the Sharky side unchanged from last round. Fanukan is in the nineteen. So he's working his way back from his knee injury. The Gold Coast Titans side. Brimson returns at fullback after a bout with the Kovice, which sees Izarko shift to the wing and Masters out of the 17. Big Tino starts in lock and Mo Fotowaika is benched. What is Tino's preferred position? Plays prop would, one I, week, lock the next. In the game as it currently stands, though, lock Probably and means prop, fuck all. It doesn't, yeah. I mean, there are very few locks who play like you would traditionally expect a lock to play. Yeah, and probably Jakey and yeah. probably fuck all other than that, really, mm. right? Yeah. Yeah, if not not many, if any. Um, Tino ain't a lock. Well, he's a, he's a lock in the 2022 20, sense of the word, which is a prop that doesn't wear eight or ten. <laughs> <laughs> look. Not Titans a lot of ball side. playing, and that, which probably leads to my point. Hmm. Not a lot of ball playing in the Titans forwards. No, the way of the game at the moment, and, and and it's probably the the blueprint and the copy copycat 
mentality of the NRL following on from Penrith's example and success is that now everyone's sort of, well, plenty of teams are wrestling to have an Isaiah Yo. Yep. Um, the most underrated player in the universe, apparently. Um, <clears throat> you're hearing it more and more, but not tonight. No, we've we've heard it. We're not hearing it more and more. We're hearing it exactly the same amount. Yeah. It started exa- it started when Jay Jay started being on the show. Yeah. And it's continued for the entire time at the same level, unabated. <laughs> so you're not really hearing it more and more unless you're talking about the cumulative effects of blows to our heads over yeah. the last like fucking six years or whatever. No, that's <laughs> whatever fair, it's been. That's a fair point. Um I I just don't think the Titans have it in and to compete with the Sharks for 80 minutes. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with you. Um, the Sharks... Can you, hear my, can you hear the furry cobra? In my house now? No, I can't. Fucking scratching loud, the fuck, hey? Oh, scratching the fucking door and squawking. Oh, trying to, trying to get in. Yeah. Yeah, no, I couldn't hear a thing. <laughs> Maybe the maybe the punters can hear it. I can't hear it through the mm. Skype call. Maybe it's on, oh, the, okay. on your recording though. Yeah. Um, okay. Look, yeah, the tit- the Titans have have not been able to defend at all lately. Uh, mm. There was words on the streets that the, a heavy defeat at the hands of uh, the uh, the hands of uh, whoever who the fuck did they play last week? I can't even remember. Um, whoever the fuck that was was going to lead to the death of their coach. He survived, maybe by virtue of some consolation tries, bringing the margin closer by the end of the game. The Rabbitohs. The Rabbitohs. 30 right. to 16, yeah. they lost. That's that's it, yeah. And it was we effectively. We spoke about like, this fucking last night game. Yeah, and it was, yeah, but that's it. Gone, out of my head. Used it, ejected it. Gone, got no space. Fucking brilliant. The, the Sharks haven't been hitting the heights that they did in the early stages of the season where they pulled off that. Um, yeah, the eye-catching win against the Eels early on in the season. And mm. you had like Talakai running, running amok for a couple of weeks there. Or two, I think. Um, they haven't hit those heights, but they are a far more complete side than the Titans have ever been. And just better coached, I yeah. feel. Yeah, yeah. I, would, um, I would agree. Uh, yeah, too much structure for the Sharks, and I think the Sharks forwards nullify the, the advantage. <clears throat> Whilst they're not ball-playing forwards, there's some sizable fucking bodies in that Titans pack. Yep. Um, but I think it's nullified by the by the Sharks pack, and then you've got McInnes at lock um, as that linchpin um, to, to capitalise off the metres from the big fella. So, and then the creativity um, of, of, of Nico Hines, who's who's got more creativity in one fucking leg than, than the entire spine of the Titans organisation at the moment. I'd... Tend to agree with you. Jesus, we're agreeing with each other. This is great. I love it. it. I love it. This, this, this is what it should be like. Yeah, this is new. It's so... what well, I can't... People again, talk about the Dairy Queen put, shit, but I mean, they don't live it like we're living it tonight. That's that's great, mate. We're I can't put it. my finger on it. I cannot like, put my finger on it. So, mate, so mate, Cronulla Sharks are going to win this game, right? I agree, Nathan. Oh, I love it. I fucking... I love... The, like, the, my two favourite words in the English language paired together in the correct sequence. <laughs> <laughs> The Warriors take on the Penrith Panthers. <laughs> oh, this one's happening down already. I wonder if fucking Steve will pull himself off his deathbed to go and watch this one. Why, well, he why, died. Why, Unfortunately, why? It, was a, it was a horrible accident that he was involved in with uh, with Tyson Gamble. Unfortunately, he was caught up with him. And uh, Tyson, unfortunately, bled to death um, due to the loss of his leg. It was a delayed Chinese New Year party, and, uh, and they, they, were, they, they were basically, you know, they, they were they were inside the dragon costume. Tyson Gamble was the legs and the head, and uh, and, and Jay of Please course was the, ass. was the ass. Yes, <laughs> and uh, boy, and uh, there was a, there was a horrible horrible Never accident with, uh, with 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 firecrackers, most probably, and, and a lantern. <laughs> Just, I mean, you know, the firecrackers went off. It was more that where they'd been inserted before they went off that was the problem. Yeah, and um, obviously, at the, and, uh, and Tyson Gamble lost the leg, and uh, it, and that ignited the dragon, and unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, is, is burned to death. <laughs> that's unfortunately the firecrackers were jammed that far up his ass that it gave him a sore throat, and he died. Yes, <laughs> died died of a sore throat. Um. Fuck. <laughs> so General he, soreness, we'll call it. <laughs> Stepdad soreness. That's what we're calling. I'm going to write that one down. That'll be the title of the episode. Stepdad Love it. soreness. 
fucking perfect. All right, just give me a second. So yeah, do you want to talk about this game, Bloody Warriors versus the uh, the Panthers? I mean, oh. I, you know, I I may even convince myself to go and watch this one, to be honest. Um, because you know, fuck at least at least someone at the show needs to go and <laughs> watch games for you this year. Right? <laughs> oh. <coughs> um, look, if I could channel my inner Jay, um, I'd look at this and say, here's the thing. Um, Isaiah Yo, underrated. Luai, patient. Nathan Cleary, over game. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, what an agreeable show. No pushback. <laughs> Kick out. Kick out like a, having, a, having a having an ado car of a season like he had in his last season at the Storm. <laughs> Before he goes to the Bulldogs to yeah. fucking Amen. wither and die on the vine. <laughs> to really just have a real Tyson Gamble of a career at the Bulldogs. <laughs> um, fuck me, the Panthers are a five. The Warriors are $10. That's all we look, need to say. Look, look, you don't have to say a thing about anyone in the Panthers organization. Let's look at the Warriors. Let's look at what the Warriors have done over the last couple of weeks and the points that they've conceded in games and the lack of defense that they've shown which, with whoever's coaching them. I wish them all the best in the Stacey. Yeah, we we are clearly rooting for this side in the Stacey Jones era, and I'd love him to be the first successful coach of this fucking club. But this is the week they've decided. <laughs> Hang on a sec. This is the week they've decided. The first successful coach. Is that? I, I don't even know if you, you did look that on, on purpose. You got, no, you got to look on your face like something. I did something. What did I do? It, I don't even know if you did it on purpose. Well, they have my premiership. So they haven't, so they haven't like, you know, defined success. It was, they're like in titles, right? <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, the irony. The irony <laughs> that they're playing an Ivan Cleary coach side. Ivan Cleary took them to a grand look, final. Look, you know. Oh, fuck. Look, Brilliant. Yeah. You know, They'll, they'll, take they'll be, credit for it. If even if you didn't be, do it on be, purpose, there'll take be people. For it. There'll, there'll be people that said that, would, that say that's accidental. But um, <laughs> look, if, you know, it doesn't mean a thing. If, you know, don't mean a thing if you ain't got the ring. Now, the Warriors side though, they've decided that this week, coming up against the defending premiers, who seem to be on stoppable roll at the moment, this is the week to go. Well, Harris David is pulling the pin on his career after this season, so let's bring in Ronald Volkman, a young guy with a, tons of raps on him. Let's bring him in this week mm. to proper fuck his, 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 his fledgling career. This um, guy's development has been accelerating at a rapid rate of knots. We need to knock that on the head. Yeah. Throw him in against Penrith. Yeah, and he's uh, Sean Johnson has had a rocket fired up him, I believe. Hey, did you see that video? Fuck, who was it now? Fuck, I can't remember who it was. There was a video where they were talking to... It was after the Warriors game... And I think that on the sideline, they're talking to maybe Reese Walsh or DW. No, I can't remember who it was. They're talking to White Locks. And, <laughs> and they were getting interviewed. And you know how they have that, they'd have them front and center on the camera and they got the guys in the in the commentary mm. booth or, you know, in the studio firing questions down at them, right? How and did you the, get Reese Walsh and Dallin would tell you? No, because I can't. I, no, because I, I, don't, I don't remember who it was. But um, okay. And I, I just cannot remember. I'm just throwing names out there. I thought they might have had a chance. They might. The reason why I said it is because I thought that maybe they had DWZ up there to talk about that amazing fucking try because that would have probably mm. put him on the radar to ca- catch a sideline interview at the end of the game. Um, but in the background of that interview, you can see, I can't remember who the player was, but someone absolutely fucking serving Sean Johnson. A Warriors like, player? A Warriors player absolutely fucking giving it to him with oh, both I, barrels. I didn't see it, and I feel like I've been deprived of some I'll try and I'll try and find quality. it and chuck it in the game thread. Surely it this. had to be Tohu Harris or... I don't think I don't think it was Tohu. Josh I, Curran's probably got the stones to do that. Josh Curran's probably got the, the platform in which he can actually do that too because he is you know, a great player for them. Mm. But I will, I will find the video, and I'll put it in the in the game thread on the Facebook group for this uh, for this one because I thought it was, it was very very interesting. And then you're seeing um, when I was just scanning for news articles earlier, I saw that you know there was something talking about you know that he was he's, he came close to being dropped. Wow. Um, so so they recognise what everyone else is recognising that Sean Johnson mm. is just not fucking doing it for him, um, which makes it weird that they'd put a, a rookie in, however highly rated he is. And pair him with Sean Johnson. I mean, I know I know Harris Tavita's going, 
but I think that that young guy is mature enough that he's fucking given it everything. Hundred percent. You know, where Sean Johnson, you know, obviously. Well, I think he showed enough maturity in the interview that he gave when he spoke about his retirement. Yep. To indicate that he's he's professional enough to to put in a hundred percent for the rest of the season until he finishes his time there. Yeah, exactly. Um, look, Panthers. What color jerseys will the Panthers wear? If they wear black jerseys with black armbands, is that a mark of disrespect for the unfortunate and tragic and untimely death of our our brother? Look, we we love the guy, obviously, and we're mourning, we're mourning his death. We are. But I mean, like, does the Panthers organization even know he's fucking who he fucking is? Really? Jeez, he's underrated, isn't he? Within the Panthers. Very underrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because, cause, well, you know, I guess, you know... To, well, to, to be rated, you have they'd, they'd have to know. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a formula at play here. To be to be underrated, then first you need, you need to have a rating that you should be rated at, and then yeah. you need to have a rating that they rate him at. I mean, and, and then that, and you know, then, then, you know, figure B has to be less than figure A. Um <laughs> So, look, I feel like there's a lot of debate around around the subject. <laughs> <laughs> Panthers by like a fucking million, like 50. 50's on the table for sure. <coughs> I think it'll be 50 at half time. Is this the last game they're having it um, ready? Yeah, because we've got, they've got the fucking... Um, oh, fuck. I almost said, almost said we in relation to the fucking Warriors. <laughs> Let's hear about that for a decade. <laughs> it is funny how they'll latch onto a single slip of the tongue, isn't it? Fuck me. Yeah, dumb. Oh, uh, yeah, they got the Tigers next week in New Zealand, so. Yeah. Um, There's going to be nothing but nothing but sponge cake and fucking jam jammed all over Morton Daly Stadium and through the car park after this one. Yeah. And in the cubicles, of course. And, and of course, the um, customary domestic violence case in the car park after the game. <laughs> well, it is a Penrith game at Redcliffe. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it's, a, it's a powder keg environment. <laughs> <laughs> All these brand new, all these brand new fucking Panthers jerseys that could have that could have gone towards payments on the fucking Commodore yeah. or a fucking or a carton of fucking Winnie Greens <laughs> or a fucking sandwich for a kid. <laughs> the, uh, the Parramatta Eels take on the Roosters in Parramatta. Is it and- wrong that we're having as much fun as we are? It's fucking brilliant. <laughs> I fucking love it. Fuck that cunt. Oh, oh so so many. <laughs> So, so many new meat, like yeah, you know, yeah. Tyson Gamble's death. <laughs> I mean, that one, that that one's permeated almost every game. <laughs> the Eels take on the Roosters, and and are there no changes to that side that got humiliated by the worst team of the last two seasons? Uh, the Roosters side, uh, Kiri is named despite concerns about the his soft shell crabness. Um, <coughs> Veryl's all returns, time, all time. Veryl's returns it's a hooker fucking, despite missing I will say weeks. that I thought about that last night after we stopped recording as I was getting ready for bed. I was finishing off a little bit more work and I thought of the soft shell crab and I fucking laughed. And then today at work, I was just fucking toiling away, doing a few quotes and stuff. Tell and me the though. Fucking, the fucking soft shell crab crept into my head again. Oh, I was giggling away. Tell so me, good. tell me though. Tell me, did it make you pick up, pick up your phone and hit Uber Eats and then fucking throw an order down to the sushi train? For no, no. I will say it did not do that. <laughs> right. Uh, <coughs> that's what I was thinking after. I, uh, after I what if you go in like, there and order a Luke Keery? Do they know what you're talking about? Yeah, no, no, they don't. No, it, it, has, it hasn't gone that wide yet. Give it a few weeks. Yeah, and you'll be hearing, you'll be it, more hearing more. it more and more. <laughs> <laughs> on fire, Gillis. We are oh, on fire. Fucking, we are. This is the greatest episode of all time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's one. We only needed one element, one element to be removed, and we fucking struck gold. Can't put my finger on it, but whatever oh, it is, oh, it taking it back to 2015, off. son. <laughs> Whatever it is, it can fuck off for good. Oh, the Broncos and Cowboys are good again, and fucking <laughs> and look and look at the show. It's just it's firing. Um, oh, you're gonna be after the grand final. You're gonna be fucking power spewing for fifteen minutes straight. <laughs> I bet you can't wait. Oh, it's like it's like we found a fucking time machine. Um, rooster side. Okay. Oh, Verrills returns at hooker after missing several weeks through being a soft shell crab. Um, Hutchinson drops to the bench. Uh, Momorowski out of the 17. Billy Smith replaces him in the centres. Uh, Egan Butcher replaces uh, Daniel Saluk Fafida on the bench. And can the Eels 
I mean, there's going to be a bounce Surely back they have embarrassment, right? Yeah. I mean, just the baseline thing, not talking about the quality of any of the players in the side, just through the sheer embarrassment that they that they were subjected themselves to and their fan base and, you know, mm. like there's going to be a bounce back factor. Certainly. Um, look, the Roosters, they, if the Bulldogs can put a fucking beating on the Parramatta Eels because they're not quite there, the Roosters most definitely can. Agreed. I still I still lean towards para. A the bounce back factor. B I think they're just a better side than the Roosters at the moment. Um last week aside. Well yeah, um, both both of them lost to the dogs, so I guess they're both in yeah, the same boat, right? Fair. Um I probably what I can see happening is Moses and Gutherson having big games and f- them trying to fucking give the impression they've got their fucking swagger back when their careers were... They, there was caps put on their careers last weekend. Well, this, the, 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 the thing is, if you can... What, what, what the doggy showed... I mean, it's, it's the Bulldog showed this, that if you can get in the heads of Moses and Gutho early, mm. you can remove them from the game as a factor. Yeah, you and you know, and and with that in mind, I'd get Connor Watson on the field as soon as possible. Yeah, and it's almost it's, it's, it's he's a shame a little that cunt. <laughs> yeah, and it's a shame that Rhea Hargraves isn't there. Yeah, you know, and uh, and also um, <coughs> Radley as well. <coughs> yeah, like, Radley's mate, a good one. Yeah, that's that's probably the the, the worst part <coughs> of it for for the Roosters. Some of the absolute pests and just hard guys yeah. that can give them the business aren't there. That's fair. Um. I'm still back in para though. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking para, but you know, you know, as a as someone who as a, as a manly fan, I'm you know, I'm hoping the eels lose. Yeah, fuck the um, eels and fuck Mitchell Moses and fuck Gutho. But yeah, yeah. But, you know. Look, and another, if someone can, if this game can give me another selection of of, uh, of gifts of Mitchell Moses <laughs> getting fucking bullied, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm I'm there for it. Uh, give it to me. Uh, okay, the Raiders take on the Knights in Canberra. The Raiders side, uh, Jordan Rappiner comes back from suspension. Schiller out of the 17. Um, Papa Lee is named to start prop. The Knights, Ponga is named despite concussion concerns. <clears throat> Man starts, your mate, Man starts at lock. <clears throat> Barnett in the second row and Fitzgibbon is out of the side. Solo joins the bench. Kurt Mann. The worst, the only, the only player that even comes close to being worse than him in the NRL is Billy Wilders. Um, I think Raiders. I think they'll be too strong. Um, they'll initially get him through the forwards. Um, and I think Whiten's running game off the back of that. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't see the Knights putting much resistance up at all. Yeah, I, I think that the Raiders, like the, just the go forward they're getting up the middle over the last sort of what, four or five weeks, yeah, has been just phenomenal compared to what they were dishing up in the early parts of the season, and I think that they would have learned a lot last week with the way how easily they were rolling the Broncos in that last twenty minutes, but how they couldn't take advantage of it, they could just couldn't put the passes together to take advantage of the role they were on, mm. and I think that's something that they probably would have focused on this week. And I expect to see them, you know, be, be, being better at finishing their opportunities that they create. And I think the opportunities are going, the same opportunities are going to exist this week because I think they'll they'll be able to roll through the the, the nights increasingly as the game goes on. Yeah, I think the the Raiders showed them enough last week against the the Broncos, um, despite the the Broncos heroics to um, to hold them off. I think. What they showed in that game will be more than enough to handle the Knights. Yeah, yeah, and and we're talking about you know getting under players' skins. Pong is another player that you can you know you can get under his skin and you can bully yeah. him out of the game. And 100%. the Raiders and the Raiders do have a guy who whose game is predicated <laughs> on that kind of cunty behaviour in Jordan yeah. Rappiner. So yeah. I expect to get I expect to see him up in his face on on kick chase and giving him the business and trying to take him out of the game mentally. And then you know it only t- doesn't take much of a collision to take him out of the game physically either legally. Because um, soft yeah. crap. Exactly, exactly. And um, and if we've shown if uh, if science has proved anything is that headgear does not prevent soft shell crabs. 
No. From having their shield cracked up. Okay, and finally, the last game of the round, the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs take on the West Tigers in a rematch of uh, <laughs> the embarrassment <laughs> at Redcliffe. Well, we did play them a couple of weeks ago. We've kind of fucking... <laughs> Stop ruining my narrative, man. Um, okay, so Patolo is out through a concussion. Uh, Curtis Morin is to debut on the bench in his place. Uh, Fatala Mariner starts in the second row. Corey Waddell benched. Gee, the doggies are getting that much closer. I mean, they got Corey Waddell into 15 now. All they got to do is add another three or four numbers to that jersey, and they're in good shape. Uh, the West Tigers side. Big news with um, Dewey returning via the bench. Uh, Kapoa back in the centres after the suspension of Brent Naden. Um, Leilua out of the side. He's been released from his contract and currently in limbo. Uh, Tulangi comes in the starting side in the back row. Jock Madden out of the squad with our new Brown named on the bench. So that was a quick experiment. Mm. <laughs> He's So Noddy has realised that that aspect of Madge's coaching was probably for the best. Yeah. Um, I don't... I, I think Madden needs time and reps in, in first grade and, and this, this fucking around with him on the bench. And <clears throat> I don't think that's doing his game any good at all. I think New Brown has shown that he has the ability with his speed um, off the mark around the dummy half um, to, to have an impact when he comes off the bench, which is not something Madden can do. He's, he's coming on and he's trying to take reps away from, from Jacko or Brooks, and it's it, it's a round peg in a square hole. If I'm honest, um, what are you doing for... with what are you doing with Dewey? <coughs> I mean, because he's the way the in. way that your guys are playing, he's not he's not going to be slotting into the six or whatever like last year. I mean, like Brooksy yeah. and Hastings are pretty much established as that combo. So you reckon he goes he just ends up into centers at the expense? Well, of you like... don't. You just don't know what Noddy has in store. Like, is Noddy a Brooks guy? I don't fucking uh, know. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, he was—he was, he was an average halfback as well. I mean, there's a kinship there between them. <coughs> Can't play to Origin and fucking internationals. Yeah, I mean, but you like, know, I was never—I was never a naughty fan. He threw and, that and... intercept to fucking Matty Bowen, and like, yeah, you're right, he did. Fuck that guy for life. Well, I agree with you. I was never a fan, but. <laughs> you can't, you can't just diminish the man's career credentials. I just did. I just, I, just, I literally just did. <laughs> okay, I guess me, you can. me, zero games of NRL. Just, just, just shit it all yeah, over. What the Noddy's fuck career. do you know, mate? How many NRL games have you played? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, it's the same thing. I don't fucking ring up Martin Scorsese, and, and I, don't, I don't care. I've never made a film, but I'll, I'll get on Twitter and tell someone their film was shit. That's fair. And I'll uh, and I'll yeah, I'll tell her yeah I'll talk shit about someone's cooking as well. I mean I yeah. guess that one I got some form. But <laughs> yeah. what about um, you know, how many Michelin stars have never you hosted? That's it. Never hosted a can't say I've never hosted hosted a podcast, but fucking happy to hack on people about the audio of a podcast. Maybe shut the fuck up. Yeah, see, I understand. Oh, look at I, you! You I, have I, such a soft spot for I, for no. that fucking piece of shit. I've got a soft spot for you, Glenny, as well. But I was just going to say, the problem with your analogy is that he has been on podcasts. That's all I'm yeah. saying. I was just protecting you from that aspect of it. He wasn't fucking hosting them, well, was he? Yeah, you know, like guesting, I guess. Yeah, it's not the fucking yeah. same. Yeah. Anyone could be a guest. Look at Jay. That's why he's not here tonight. It's not one of, he's not one of the main hosts, clearly. Just a fucking guest. <laughs> yeah, who died in a tragic <laughs> He died, with unfortunately, <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a fucking Chinese New Year costume. Six months up. after Chinese New Year. <laughs> In a belated celebration. Four or five months after Chinese New Year. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunate, some out of day fireworks. <laughs> Fuck me. Look, can the West Tigers. <laughs> yes. I think it's a danger game for the Bulldogs because, I mean, they'll be riding high. I mean, they fucking absolutely destroyed Parramatta and gave them yeah. not a sniff all game. Um, and it's and it's a very Canterbury thing to do, to take five massive steps forward like that mm. and then take six backwards by losing to the West Tigers. <laughs> is, is it six backwards? Really? Well, I mean, one more than the it's, five it's, they took. It's like it's, it's, it's backwards. It's, it's, it's no, net it's, backwards. It's, That's it's, what I'm saying. It's probably more than six backwards, let's be honest, if they, if they lose to the Tigers, which I think they will. Um, one thing I do want to say, Jake Avrilo. Yes. Much blind player, but even by, by some of the by Bulldogs. Bulldog, not some, by the Bulldogs <laughs> fan base, yeah. Yeah. 
And I think he's 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 a weird one because he's played centre, he's played five eight, he's played off the bench, he's played seven, maybe even is he slotted into hooker? I'm not sure. Weird that fullback looks to be his best best spot. Yep. I I don't. I, I was wondering where the Bulldogs were going to find a position for for Averillo long term, and lo and behold, Mick Potter sorted it out in a couple of weeks. Um, I expect a better performance from the Tigers than than what they showed last week, which shouldn't be hard. Um, Excited to see what Dewey can do um, and how how he starts his journey back from from serious injury. Bulldogs slight favourites, which is fucking insulting. Tigers thirteen plus. Right, and the one thing that the, 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 this game this is one of these important games in the battle for the spoon this year. It's been a while. Can't, like we, what the fuck are you talking about? <clears throat> I'm just Tigers saying, winning the spoon. No, Tigers I'm no not. chance of making the eight and then winning the spoon. What are you talking about? I'm not. I'm not saying that the Tigers are going to win the spoon, mate. I would never say that to you. Mate, but don't fuck it. Don't fuck up. Don't fuck up the vibe. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Just let me let me let me, fit, let me complete my thought. Okay. I'm just saying. The last couple of years, we did have that. We did have the Bulldogs versus Broncos thing, and that was you know like mm. that, that was and that was a very good spoon battle in in like two years ago, and it turned out to be you know decided in the last round. Yeah. But. This year, there are four teams separated with a grand total of two points. And you bring the Knights who aren't performing well, bring them, mm. them into the, you know, they're only two points ahead as well. So it's a big field yet to fully be, I mean, I would say at the moment on form, <coughs> I think the Warriors and the Titans are probably descending and looking more like There is legitimately six or seven teams that have put spoon-like form on the board this season so far. Yeah, yep. for more than one week. Yep, yep. So uh, very, very interesting. And this is one of those games that's critical for the race because the Tigers have a two-point buffer on the Dogs at the moment. Mm. And while the Dogs aren't on the bottom, um, on differential you know, by virtue of their big win against the Eels, uh, and mm. consigning the Titans to the bottom place. Interesting times and a good battle. Yes. Hopefully, hopefully it stays a you know a good four-way battle for the Spoon into the final round. Are you going to fuck up this entire episode by tipping the Dogs? No, hell no. Hell no. Why would I do that? Tiger's got, Tiger's got this one. I mean, Mick, Potter, I mean, Mick, Mick Potter's turned things around from the Trent era, but he's not a fucking miracle. He's not a miracle worker. I agree with you, Nathan. Lovely. I love it. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Now, um, so yeah, Tiger's, and I mean, you know, 13 plus. They're just gonna, Jacko's going to fucking kick him to death, and then he's going to touch him to death too. <coughs> he's going to... Probably should have went and touch him to death first. <laughs> But. He's going to touch him to death and then kick him to death. He's going to be, fucking, he's going to be Dennis Ferguson up in this bitch. Jesus. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, the dogs, you know. I feel, like you took, I feel like you took it a notch too far. <laughs> I could have taken it a notch too far, but I fucking, I, I, that, that was actually my fucking polite version. <laughs> okay, uh, gotcha. <laughs> now, um, just want to do a little bit of a quick mailbag action. Um we had uh, a comment from uh, Stuart who actually did uh, look up the numbers that I was talking about in terms of how the dogs perform with Trent versus how the dogs perform with Potter. And uh, they scored 96 points in 10 rounds under Trent at 9.6 a game. And they just passed that on the weekend with 98 points under Potter in four games at 24.5 points a game. And so that average, that's that's uh, risen, it's brought their average up from 9.6 to 13.9 per game and um and if they had run at a 13.9 point average in the first 10 rounds then they would have won four of the games they lost in that period and they would be somewhere around the bottom of the eight right now wow so that says it all um and thomas uh, responded to uh, he, he was the guy that watching the the rabbits games and every time he watched it they lost and every yeah. time he missed out so in response to just watch the games he said he does but suffering through the live losses at six in the morning on a sunday isn't quite made up for by re-watching the wins when i already know the result fair enough i'll take that yep now um that is it that is full time for episode 472 and uh as always if you'd uh, like to support the show consider 
uh, becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash twill nation. Uh, you can head to the website this week in league.com forward slash links and get links to all our social media communities and all that sort of stuff. Um, very happy to say that finally, after many stops and starts, the uh, 2022 supporter packs are now up uh, this week in league.com forward slash shop. And we've also got the 2022 hoodies for sale now. If you missed out on the hoodies uh, last year, uh, we did get a lot a lot of those out. Um, you can grab a black one as as per the last year one. And this year, if you got the one last year, then we've got the ones on a nice green that uh, I made a uh, like a custom green one for one of the boys last year and it was a big hit at magic round when people saw him wearing it so um by popular demand that one is now up and uh by all means grab it and it's a, a wide range of sizes so uh and we're looking for those to be a, a have a two-week pre-order period for the supporter packs and the hoodies and then that takes us through to almost the end of june i think and and then at that point we're looking for delivery in july so, and we're going to cut it off at like the 20, I think the cutoff is the, the end of the 28th of June. So get in there now. And with the supporter packs, there are a finite number that we can actually produce because uh, one of the components is already completed and we won't be making more of them. So first in best dressed and don't cry to me if you miss out. Fair. Consider this fair warning. Um, Might need to make a touch football hat so I can play in it. Make you a, sorry, a touch football what? Touch football hat. A touch football hat. What exactly yeah. is a touch football oh, hat? Oh, it's like that meshy kind of material, you know? Like, like, a, like, a, like a running hat? Yeah. Okay. Not like a trucker's cap? No, fuck it. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> the fucking most ridiculous thing you will ever see in your life is me putting on a trucker hat. Like, my head is not is not the right shape. My ears are in the wrong place to, to pull off a trucker hat. So in the in the game thread, um, it, well, the, you know, it, my ears are in the right place because they're on the side of my head. But I feel like they sit up a little bit high. Yeah, look, I th- I think there are far more ridiculous hats that people could put on you than a trucker's hat. And I invite I invite listeners to when I put the game thread up tomorrow <laughs> to please, uh, I'll I'll find a picture of Glenny and I'll <laughs> and I'll take the background of it and then uh, boil me Photoshop you Photoshop hats like on this? the Glenny and show, <laughs> show show us some more ridiculous hat styles than truckers hats. <laughs> Get crazy, oh, motherfuckers! We'll have some fun with that. Yeah, we should we should, should we, will, we, will we give someone a prize <laughs> for the next one, or, <laughs> yeah, or will it should. just be or will it just be our enjoyment? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone that wants to Photoshop Jay as the back end of a fucking Chinese dragon oh, fucking costume, go for it. If, go for you, it. If, if anyone has the has the ability to, you know, give us a, an artist an artist's uh, impression <laughs> of the of the tragic belated Chinese New Year dragon firework accident that resulted in the death of Two Tyson deaths. Gamble and the <laughs> and the, uh, the the death of uh, stepdad, then <laughs> I'd love to see it. And on that note, <laughs> that's it. Do you have okay. anything? Any any final remarks? Glenn? No. Oh fuck! Fuck! I've had some fun. Thank you. <laughs> so good. All good. And uh, I'll talk to you then. Uh, will it, will would there be the opportunity for a member zone on Sunday with this Bulldogs game? Do you think for the second half? Um, out Sunday, unfortunately. Yeah. No <clears> problem. <throat> In that case, I'll talk to you uh, on Monday. That you will. <laughs> <laughs>